Hey, it's great that you'll be back in 2024. I have a lot of new interesting and exciting videos planned for you in 2024. To make sure you don't miss any of my videos, subscribe to my channel and activate the Glock, thank you very much. Today I want to take you on a little trip back in time, to the beginnings of autofocus, or rather to the first and only Canon SLR for the FD bayonet that offered an auxiliary function for focusing. In this video I will show you the Canon AL1QF, quick focus, with all its features. Have fun with it! The Canon AL1 is a 35mm film SLR camera. Weighing 490 grams or about 1.03 ounces, it is quite light. Its dimensions without lens are 142 by 87 by 48 mm, which corresponds to 5.59 by 3.42 by 1.9 inches. You can use any Canon FD or NFD lens, as well as lenses from other manufacturers that have this FD or NFD bayonet mount. I personally use a lot of Tamron lenses, they use an interchangeable bayonet so they can be used on different cameras from different manufacturers. I have already made some videos about Tamron lenses for you. Feel free to watch them as well. The Canon AL1 was introduced in 1982. A year earlier, Canon introduced the NFD 4.0 to 70 mm with built-in autofocus. This autofocus zoom was followed in 1985 by Canon's first and last SLR for the Canon FD system, the Canon T80. Now let me show you the camera's functions in detail. The on-off switch is located directly under the shutter release. By turning the switch from L to A, the camera is switched on and the shutter can be released. To use the self-timer, simply turn the switch further to the S position. When the self-timer has been activated, this is indicated by a visual signal. To rewind a film, you must first press a small pin. Then turn the rewind crank until you no longer feel any resistance. Pull the rewind crank up and the camera body will pop open. Over the years, my AL1 has developed some minor flaws. The button for pressing the pin has been lost and the battery compartment had to be repaired. The film can now be removed and a new one inserted. Insert the 35mm film into the slot on the left side of the camera and press the film rewind button. Pull the film out of the cartridge, so that the beginning of the film can be threaded into the holder. Make sure that the perforation of the film is also in the transport sprockets. Tighten the shutter to transport the film forward. The camera back is then closed and the film is transported again. The rewind knob should rotate while the film is being transported. Then check again by turning the rewind knob very gently to see if you feel any resistance. If so, the film is loaded correctly. Important. Do not rotate, just feel the resistance and do not use force. Aperture priority is available as an automatic exposure mode. The lens aperture ring must be moved from the A position. The shutter speed dial must also be set to the A position. To do this, simply turn the control dial to position A. The control dial is easy to engage and protect it against accidental adjustment. To set the aperture, press and hold the small button on the aperture ring, turn it counterclockwise and set the aperture ring to the desired aperture. When the shutter release button is pressed partway down, the camera determines the shutter speed for the selected aperture and displays it on a scale. Shutter speeds from 1 1,000th of a second to 2 seconds are available in aperture priority mode. For more information about aperture and shutter speed, please visit my website aperture1.4.com, where you will find all the information you need about the interaction of these two parameters, and much more.
Now let me show you the camera's other functions in detail. The frame counter indicates the number of frames to be exposed. It increments by one each time the film is advanced. And counts up to 38 frames. The numbers 12, 20, 24, and 36 are highlighted in orange to indicate the end of the film. At that time, films were available in the lengths just mentioned. Today, only films with 24 or 36 exposures are usually available. When the shutter release button is pressed partway down, AE metering is activated. The shutter release button also accepts a standard cable release. A cable release combined with a tripod is the best choice for blur-free, long exposures. When using a telephoto lens without a tripod and shooting handheld, the shutter speed should generally be at least the reciprocal of the focal length. This means that you should set the shutter speed to 1 125th of a second for an 85mm lens and 1 250th of a second for a 200mm lens. This rule generally applies to all focal lengths. Only with wide-angle lenses may slightly slower shutter speeds be appropriate. Exposures longer than 2 seconds are also possible with the cable release and the shutter speed dial set to position B, however, the automatic shutter speed only works up to 2 seconds, so there is no automatic exposure in this bulb setting. A cable release with a locking mechanism simplifies exposures with slow shutter speeds, as the cable release does not have to be permanently pressed. Under unusual conditions, the automatic shutter speed may not produce satisfactory results. This is the case when shooting against the light, with very dark subjects, or when shooting with large bright areas, such as a snow-covered landscape. In this scenario, the exposure needs to be adjusted. The exposure is measured as usual, the value is noted, and corrected by adjusting the shutter speed on the shutter speed dial. For example, the camera measures 1 500th of a second at aperture 11 for a snow-covered landscape. Press the button in the center of the shutter speed dial and set a shutter speed. In this example, 1 125th of a second, the aperture remains unchanged. The slower shutter speed means that the shutter stays open longer and more light falls on the film. This compensates for underexposure. The same is true in backlit situations, for example, where the automatic metering would include too much brightness in the exposure calculation and the main subject would be underexposed, therefore too dark. Another option is to change the automatic metering by pressing the exposure compensation button. The exposure is set as usual by pressing the shutter button. Then press and hold the exposure compensation button until the image is captured. The camera exposes 1.5 f-stops more. However, you should keep an eye on the meter needle in the viewfinder to make sure it does not fall into the underexposure range. It may be necessary to set a larger aperture on the aperture ring to ensure handheld shooting and correct exposure. Note that the backlight button must be held down until the shutter release button is pressed. It does not lock. The Canon AL1 does not have an automatic film speed setting based on the DX code printed on the film. Therefore, the film speed must be set manually after inserting the film. While pressing the small lock button, turn the film speed dial until the desired ASA number, today ISO, is opposite the green index. Correct exposures are only possible after this setting, because the metering system now knows the correct film speed. The film speed can be set in thirds. The ASA or ISO setting can also be used for exposure compensation. When shooting against the light, it is advisable to use the backlight button as described above instead of setting the film speed. However, when shooting in a dark environment, or dark subjects against a dark background, exposure must be corrected either by changing the film speed setting or by turning off the automatic mode. In the former case, you will need to set a higher ASA or ISO number. Each full step on the ASA scale is equivalent to one f-stop. For example, if you have a 200 ASA or ISO film in your camera, set it to 400 ASA. Each full step on the ASA scale corresponds to one f-stop. For example, if there is film with a sensitivity of 200 ASA or ISO in the camera, set 400 ASA. The exact number of stops depends on the situation. In general, a subject in front of a dark background requires at least one stop less to get the right exposure. To be on the safe side, 
You can take several shots with different exposure values on either side of the measured value. The camera requires two 1.5 volts AAA batteries to operate. A known problem with this camera model is that the battery door is often defective and does not close properly. As in the case of my camera. You can solve this problem by doing a small repair yourself or by using an automatic film transport with the Canon Winder A or A2, as this will keep the battery door closed. Open the battery compartment by pressing the release button. The battery cover will pop open. Insert two new batteries, matching the polarity to the markings in the battery compartment. The capacity of the batteries can be checked by pressing the battery check button. Pictures can be taken when the meter in the viewfinder is above the battery check mark. If not, replace the battery. The mark on the top of the camera indicates the exact position of the film plane. This serves as a reference point when measuring the shooting distance, such as when shooting close-ups. All distance markings on the lens are also referenced to this point. You do not need the film plane mark for normal shooting. The hot shoe accepts flashes from a wide range of manufacturers. The camera does not offer a modern TTL auto flash, as is common in various versions today. However, Canon Speedlight flash units offer a convenient alternative. Set the pre-selected program aperture on the speedlight on the lens. When the flash is sufficiently charged, the ready lamp will illuminate and the camera will automatically set the sync speed to 1 60s. The shutter speed button can be set to any speed except B. All A series speed lights can be used with these functions. T series speed lights can also be used, but only with the functions supported by the camera. For flashes with only one hot shoe, set the shutter speed button to 1 60th of a second, which is the camera's sync speed. A flash symbol is engraved on the shutter speed button next to 1 60th of a second. A winder offers motorized film transport. The power winder A or A2 can be attached to the AL1 in a few simple steps and adapts harmoniously to the housing. Both camera motors allow you to choose between two operating modes, single frame shooting with automatic film advance and continuous shooting, in which the film is automatically advanced at around 2 frames per second and the shutter is cocked whereby only the Winder A2 allows you to switch between single frame advance and continuous film advance at a maximum of 2 frames per second. I've already made a great video for you and I highly recommend it. I present various accessories for your Canon FD system camera. It's worth watching. When the film is exposed, the winder stops and a small red indicator light illuminates. To rewind the film, press the rewind button on the winder, which is connected to the rewind button on the camera. The rest of the procedure is the same as without the winder. Visual defects can be corrected with corrective lenses. Corrective lenses were available in 10 different strengths. Plus 3, plus 2, plus 1.5, plus 1 plus 0 0.5, 0, minus 0 0.5, minus 2, minus 3 and minus 4 diopters. For the Canon A camera models, you need corrective lenses with the designation S, for square. The eye correction lenses R, for round, are reserved for Canon F camera models. They make it easier for people with near or farsightedness to view the viewfinder image in focus. When choosing an eye correction lens, refer to your eyeglass prescription and, if possible, do a practical test. I am happy to still be able to get hold of eye correction lenses for some of my Canon A and T series models. The most interesting feature of this camera is undoubtedly the focusing aid. Look into the viewfinder and compose the picture, so that the metering area is fully focused on the main subject. When you press the shutter release button, the focus lamp lights up. Focus on the subject as usual. Red arrows indicate the direction in which to focus. When the green lamp glows, the subject is in focus. Just great.
you can see more information in the viewfinder. On the right side of the screen, the camera displays the shutter speed automatically calculated for the aperture you have set. I generally recommend the use of a flash or a tripod to avoid blurred images at shutter speed slower than 1 30th of a second. Please also remember the reciprocal of the focal length mentioned above to determine the slowest shutter speed. Overexposure warning. If the subject you are aiming at is too bright, the metering needle will dip into the overexposure warning field. In this case, turn the aperture ring to a smaller aperture, larger F number, until the needle swings back into the correct exposure range. Underexposure warning. If the targeted subject is too poorly lit, the metering needle dips into the underexposure warning field. In this case, turn the aperture ring to a larger aperture, smaller F number, until the needle swings back into the correct exposure range. The Canon AL1 is an easy-to-use camera with all the features you need for everyday photography. Whether you are new to the world of analog photography or an advanced photographer, you will find almost everything you need to take perfect pictures. Since the early days of photography, shutter speed and aperture have not only determined the exposure, but also the image effect. Put simply, the aperture controls the depth of field. The shutter speed determines whether a subject is frozen or the movement is rendered fluidly, creatively as motion blur. If you want to know more about your three friends aperture, shutter speed and film speed, take a look at my homepage aperture1.4.com. There you will find the explanations you are looking for as well as sample images of the effects of aperture and shutter speed. I therefore give a clear recommendation to buy the Canon AL1. It offers all the important functions of an analog SLR without autofocus, but the beginnings of autofocus in the form of a focusing aid. In addition, the body is light and small, an ideal camera to always have with you. But the lens can be a bit heavier. A Canon NFD 3.5 35-105 mm is my recommendation for small but fine equipment, precisely because the optical and mechanical quality of this lens is outstanding. Please do not confuse this lens with the Canon NFD 3.5-4.5 35-105 mm. And now, find and buy this camera. Have fun with your great hobby. Thanks for watching and stay healthy. Until the next video.